When we are collecting different types of data, there are two different types of data that we can collect. One of them is called quantitative. And the other is called qualitative or sometimes called categorical data. As a kind of 95% of the time this is true, quantitative data has the word quantity in it and is going to be related to numbers. So if you're collecting data and the answer response is a number, it's almost always going to be quantitative. If you're collecting and your answer is a word choice of some type, then you're looking at qualitative or categorical data. Um, and that will get you through almost everything. Quantitative data is something that we can do our statistical summaries that we were doing in uh, the previous sections. This is things like calculating the average or finding the five number summary. Uh, it lets us do a lot of different uh, statistical analysis of what's going on. When we're talking about qualitative or categorical data, really the only thing that we can get is a, a, a grand total. We can find like a, a percentage of yes and a percentage of no. And so the types of statistics that we can do are just different, right? We can't, we can't do quite the same things with words that we can do with a, a statistical summary of some type. Um, so here we're just kind of figuring out what the most is as we move forward. How many said yes? How many said no? Let's figure things out from there. Um, now, there are some situations in time that numbers don't really mean numbers. <laughs> they more mean something like a category. Let me give you a couple of examples here of things that are uh, and really categorical data, even though they involve numbers. Um, Let's say that we have uh, voting districts. Voting districts are generally assigned numbers like one, two, three, four. But if you wanted to talk about what those voting districts were, if you took an average of all the voting districts numbers, then really all that this is, is it's just accounting. It's a way to label an area, right? It's not really a number that you can take an average of. So district one, two, three, four, or whatever. Another good example of categorical data that includes numbers would be something like taking uh, zip codes. Again, you can add zip codes up and divide them and you're gonna get an answer, but it doesn't have any meaningful information. The average of all of the zip codes of the mail that you received yesterday isn't necessarily gonna give you any useful pieces of information. And both of these, these are examples of using numbers to categorize groups rather than giving you a measurable quantity. And so uh, being able to say, if I take the average of this, will this make sense? Or sometimes something like, um, would partial or decimal values have any meaning? Is sometimes a helpful question to ask. So for example, if you're rating things on a scale of one to 10, you can average all of those values together. And even if you get something like a 7.6, it's gonna have some meaning, right? You're somewhere in between seven and uh, seven and eight, and you've got a value there and you were able to take an average that has that meaningful kind of a result. Um, a, zip code with a, a zip code average with a decimal isn't going to make any sense. Zip codes don't have decimals in them. Um, so this is kind of another, or voting district 1.7 isn't going to make any sense if you were to go through and, and uh, calculate an average for something like that. So these are kind of helpful questions. Uh, again, if it's words, it's automatically going to be qualitative. It's got that word quality where you're describing something. Um, if it has numbers, it's almost always going to be quantitative, but just be careful in terms of, am I making a measurement of some sort? Those measurements that we can take statistical summaries of, um, those are great quantitative ones and we can use that to represent things. Otherwise, uh, if it's just kind of a label process, then we're over here, um, even with numbers in our categorical category.